X-Design is a powerful CAD modeling software that captures a model's sketch elements, 3D features, design intent, mate types, and assembly motion in the cloud. This makes it easy to work on your models wherever you have internet access and allows you to work without having to manage file storage on your computer. In X-Design, you can leverage the CAD tools and workflows users are familiar with. You can create sketch-based features like extrudes and revolves, applied features such as shells, drafts, and fillets and chamfers, utilize multi-body modeling to create highly customized solid geometry, create surfaces to generate unique contours that can be thickened or converted into solids, and you can combine components into assemblies and sub-assemblies that can be mated and given motion by specifying degrees of freedom. In this lesson, I'll cover all these foundational aspects that make X-Design so powerful. And I'll dive into how you can formulate strategies and nail down the design intent of your models. X-Design combines the SOLIDWORKS CAD functionality you're familiar with and some advancements in 3D design. This microphone holder is a single body part designed here in X-Design, which has all the features listed here in the Design Manager. As you'd expect, the features can be rolled back, suppressed, and edited at any point in the design history. And the component updates to reflect the changes. X-Design uses the 3D features you've seen in SOLIDWORKS that any CAD user needs at their fingertips. The base feature can begin as an extrude, revolve, sweep, loft, etc. Once the base geometry is created, other applied features like fillets, chamfers, shells, and patterns can be added to build out the design. Multi-body modeling is also a primary feature of X-Design. This allows flexibility in your design process where individual bodies can be replicated, combined, cut, and deleted as needed to create the geometry you're looking for. Surface modeling is also one of the primary capabilities of X-Design. Some of the commands you may be familiar with, surface extrudes, revolves, sweeps, and lofts, are available as operations directly inside of the dialog boxes that appear for the standard commands. This gives you flexibility in how you want geometry to be created and can be swapped in and out of solid modeling or surface modeling as needed. In addition, some other traditional surfacing commands, surface extends, trims, ruled surfaces, splits, are incorporated for you to be able to refine the surface contours you create. As you create the various components that make up an assembly, you can insert the components into a single design and mate them together directly in the X-Design platform. This brings your design to life by specifying which mates are used to open up degrees of freedom between components. You'll be able to add mates with familiarity by being able to leverage the most universally used mate types, such as coincident, concentric, parallel, perpendicular, tangent, distance, and angle mates. All this functionality is laid out in an intuitive, simple user interface streamlining the way you create your models and bring your ideas to life. One of the most important concepts in CAD modeling is building in the right design intent for your components. You'll want to have a strategy in place to lay out the sketch profiles and build the 3D features from them, as well as incorporating applied features like shelling apart, applying draft, or adding fillets and chamfers. This hook bracket has a specific design intent in mind. As you can see, it has a custom hook shape with mounting holes at both ends. Along the length of the bracket, the center is cut out and X-shaped supports were added along its length in this area that had material removed. The design intent of this hook bracket is to reposition the X supports if the overall shape of the hook changes. The original geometry was created from a sweep feature, which has a profile and a path. This means if I edit the path, which is the first sketch in the design manager, and change the length of this long section from 150 millimeters to 180 millimeters, and click OK, 
The model updates and the X supports on the right move as well to remain centered on the cutout in the design. When setting up the structure of your design, you want to consider the major areas of geometry that will be created in a particular order. In this case, I began by creating the overall hook shape from a sweep feature. There are also a couple fillets applied at the ends so that they no longer have sharp corners. The next step was to hollow out the center of the hook, which used the shell command to remove material and leave the sidewalls on the part. Then the mounting holes were created at both ends. And finally, a single X support was created. And then it was replicated and positioned along the path of the hook. It's important to have a mental map of a process like this when designing your part. That way you know how to make edits later on and can update specific features with ease. I want to point out that sketching in X Design is intuitive and straightforward as you've experienced when working in SOLIDWORKS. The initial sweep feature is made from two sketches, the first of which is the path that the profile travels along. I can double-click to edit this sketch, and you can see that there's a number of dimensions, sketch entities, and constraints added. The linear and angle dimensions specify exactly how large the hook will be, and the arcs at the corners on the right help refine the path and give a curved shape. Clicking on any of these sketch entities will bring up the constraints related to it, which can be edited by clicking on the constraint and selecting Edit Constraint from the Context Toolbar. Or it can be deleted by clicking on the trash can icon or simply pressing Delete once it's selected. I'll undo this to bring the tangent constraint back into the sketch. One way to simplify the design process is to use the same sketch for multiple features. For instance, I created the mounting holes at each end of the hook bracket by creating two extrude features from one sketch. If I edit this sketch by double-clicking on it, you can see the profiles for the mounting holes on both ends. If I exit the sketch, you can see that the first extrude command creates the boss at each end. However, the holes don't pass all the way through the bracket. The second extrude feature, however, used the same sketch and created the holes that pass all the way through. By leveraging the same sketch as before, I was able to create the features needed without having to create extra sketches. And of course, once you have some sort of base geometry in place, applied features can be used to modify the geometry with only a few input parameters. In this case, once I had the basic sweep shape created, I was able to add two fillets to the ends to make them rounded. And then I created the hollowed out geometry by applying a shell command. This didn't involve any sketching and all I had to do was specify the sizes of the fillets and the shell feature by typing in a numerical value. Having a strategy for combining all these features is important in setting up the right design intent. This will allow you to make updates at the exact point in the design manager that you're looking for, which immediately updates all the geometry downstream. XDesign keeps all these changes to the geometry saved on the cloud in the file you're working on, ensuring that you can always come back to the design and make changes whenever is needed.